Good evening. Welcome to uh, panel two, uh, student admission panel two for Boston College admissions. Uh, my name is Chris O'Brien. I'm associate director of admissions. Usually we have the great benefit of welcoming you to campus as admitted students and hearing firsthand from current Boston College students about their experience. Uh, we can't do that. Uh, but because our students are our students and generous with their time and certainly care deeply about the legacy that's left to the next class, the class of 2024, um, I was able to get some of them to get involved with us tonight in our panel and talk a little bit about life in the Cannell School of Nursing. Uh, I'm joined by four students who are all members of the Cannell School of Nursing. What I'd like you to do is introduce yourself. In, introduce yourself. Uh, we'll start with you, Steve. Uh, just what year you are, where you're from, um, just so we get a quick uh, idea of where everyone's coming from. Uh, and then I'm going to ask a few questions just to get the ball rolling about life in the Cannell School and at life at Boston College. Then um, I do have the question and answer um, ability enabled here. Uh, for the people that are joining us on this webinar. So I'll be able to answer some of your questions. Well, I'll be able to relay the questions to the real <laughs> experts here, uh, our students that are in their homes, safe and sound, uh, and talk about life at BC for one day State. So Steve, why don't you get us started? Let's find out a little bit about you. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Steve Eber. Eber. I'm a senior, sad, rip. <laughs> class of 2020. Um, and I'm from Waldwick, New Jersey. Um, is that all? What else do you want me to say? Any like my normal, like kind of what's, what's, ah, let me talk about something that's interesting that's happened to me throughout college. Um, so through the nursing school, you have opportunities to satisfy one of your, um, your population health clinical, which we can go more in depth about later. Um, but, uh, there's opportunities where you can satisfy that internationally. So I just this past January myself, and it was 12 undergraduates, five grad students, and eight faculty members uh, went to Jamaica for about a week and a half. And uh, down there, we uh, set up clinics in rural parts of Jamaica in churches um, and in local clinics where we um, were all tasked with different things every single day. It was, it was a different scenario. Uh, undergrads were tasked with triaging patients, so just taking blood pressures, doing the normal vitals, getting their background story, um, where they moved on to the... the um, Graduate students, they made the diagnoses, uh, did a little bit more in-depth view into their health histories, and then they were sent back to the pharmacy, which was also run by undergraduates, where we gathered supplies and medications and everything that we brought down for them. Um, and it was a really awesome experience uh, for, yeah, we were there for a week and a half over winter break. So it was really awesome to, to be able to give back to those types of communities. Steve, that's a great introduction. And that's how you'll finish your introduction is tell us a really cool nursing story. Perfect, Steve. Uh, Emily, why don't you go next? Yeah, all right. Hi, guys. I really can't see you, but I'm really glad that you're all here. Um, my name is Emily Ahrens, and I'm a junior in the Canal School of Nursing. Um, I just came back from abroad from Switzerland, which we can talk about too. Um, so I'm a little <laughs> off with all the nursing stuff, but um, I am originally from Mansfield, Massachusetts, and which is about an hour from BC. And one thing that the Canal School of Nursing has brought to me was an undergraduate research fellowship that I have with um, Dr. Christopher Lee. Um, and that's been a really great experience for me to get like the general process of research, how things get published, like what's the protocol. Um, and as an undergrad, I've been able to co-author three papers, which is really exciting. Um, and it's given me a mentor. Um, and if I, anyone wants to talk about the undergraduate research fellow process, I'm happy to go into detail about that too. Good stuff, good stuff. Anna, how about you? Yeah, hi guys, my name is Anna Chen. I am a sophomore in the Cannell School of Nursing. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, but I currently live in Framingham, Massachusetts. Um, one thing that the Canal School has brought me is, I think, um, flexibility, which I know is kind of a hot take, but um, we do have a very um, uh, set number of courses that we have to take, but I'm still able to pursue um, my Spanish minor in the uh, nursing school. And we do talk a lot about like cultural competency and like what it means to be a global student in the like, uh, med medical field. So this sophomore year, I've been able to take advanced Spanish and also take a Spanish class as my lit core and I have hopes to study abroad um, in fall in Quito to uh, complete my population health clinical which Steve touched a little bit about um, mm -hmm. so there's plenty of opportunities to take nursing outside of BC as well. Good stuff uh, last but not least Kate. 
Hi everyone, my name is Kate and I'm a junior in the Canal School of Nursing and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. And a great opportunity that the nursing school has brought me was the opportunity to be a tutor in the sim labs this semester. Uh, the lab was run by professors Luann Nugent and Maureen Connolly, who I've definitely formed a good relationship with and they've kind of become my mentors through that. And it's just a great way to be able to interact with some of the students that might be younger than me that I might not have classes with and it's a great way to refresh my skills too. Good stuff. Thanks, all of you. Great introductions. Now, the first question I want to ask is sort of going back to the time in your life when you're like a lot of these students who are tuning in today. You're choosing between um, nursing programs. I'm sure as a senior, you know, maybe there were three, four, five, maybe even more uh, programs that you were interested in and you had to make a choice. Um, can one or two of you talk about why you chose the Boston College Canal School of Nursing over other programs that you may have been interested in? Yeah, I could start with that one, Chris. So <clears throat> my experience was different. I don't know, being a male in nursing has been like a whole different, like long process for me, but I'm not gonna get into that now. Um, so for me, I'll be- We have like, hours. We have, we could be on for hours. <laughs> yeah, like, we could do it if you want, but um, <laughs> just stay to the state of the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. um, so for me, my, I kind of narrowed down my field to three main programs. I was between, BC, Villanova, and Fairfield. And kind of what sold BC to me um, was the access to Boston. Um, and the, the hospitals in Boston are some of the best in the country. And I'm sure the rest of the panelists kind of agree with me and that, that fact that like, that is such a big like anchor for us that we get to have access to literally like, in, if you go on US News and World Report, like number two, the second best hospital in the, in the country is Mass General Hospital. And some of us have had clinical opportunities there. Um, same with Brigham and Women's, they're ranked number 13 this year. Um, and so I actually had an opportunity there where I worked, I did um, my adult two clinical there and I worked as a PCA over the summer. So some of the best clinical sites in the country um, are at our fingertips in Boston, just a tee right away. Um, and so I think that that was one of the biggest nursing components that uh, kind of sold BC uh, to me. Uh, how about someone else? Oh, okay. Um, kind of going off of that, having Boston at your fingertips, it's kind of interesting to see like what you're learning in class being applied in these great hospitals because you're not getting these like basic cases. You're getting these, these high end medical, surgical, or like high risk maternity outcomes and things like that. So you're really getting into um, the depths of nursing rather than just kind of scratching the surface, which I really appreciated. There's some um, nursing instructors who have um, have been like, you know, I didn't do this until I was already at RN. Like, I, I didn't even have the skill before I graduated. Um, so it kind of goes to show that BC is really giving us that, the technical skills and the critical thinking skills and letting, letting us being able to be in these high-end hospitals. Um, but to kind of get into my process of, oh my God, when I try to think of my college process, it was so chaotic. Um, but I eventually settled on BC. BC was my top choice, um, mainly because when I was doing the college process, there was a lot of like stress on me, like you go to college to get a job. Um, so kind of having um, BC and having the um, connection. I've, I'm from around Boston. I never really had a feeling to leave Boston. I know some people really want to get out of where they're from, um, but Boston's always been home to me and I hope to kind of stay here after school. So kind of having my foot in the door and making these connections with um, different nursing uh, nurses or um, clinical florists has been um, really helpful in kind of figuring out what I want to do post-grad. Uh, let's talk about your first year. Uh, do you get really thrown into the fire? Um, what kind of classes, experiences do first year students in the Cornell School have to make you know that you made the right choice, to give you the support, um, and, and allow you to really uh, understand what you're getting yourself into? I think for me, I was very pleasantly surprised by the community that people started to form even as early as freshman year. When I think back to my first year at BC, it definitely was a huge transition, especially academically. I wasn't really used to having the three exams constitute your final grade, so that was definitely a bit of a wake-up call. But with that came study groups, the professors offering extra office hours for me, the TAs offering office hours, people in my class just being willing to talk through things with me and things like that. And I was definitely nervous that having kind of smaller grade and a rigorous program might make it competitive but in fact I kind of found the opposite to be true so while it's definitely a hard transition I think for me having those people that can relate to what I was going through was definitely helpful in my personal transition. Yeah and I think definitely um, one thing that nursing school does really well is um, uh, really hone in the aspect of mentorship so 
um, as a freshman, which I remember just from last year, I was just immediately so overwhelmed in a good way with how many upperclassmen were easily accessible there to reach out to help and be like, oh yeah, I remember taking anatomy. Like, I, let me tell you like how it went or like, I remember this class and like, um, just really offering their advice and their like tips and their tricks to studying or to managing their time. And um, freshman year, the nursing uh, school first semester had this um, first year nursing seminar, which basically you're put into a group with other freshman students and you're led by a junior and a senior um, lead who I don't know if um, Steve and Emily or Kate, if you guys have experience with that, but um, I remember that was a really um, impactful experience for me as a freshman because I came into BC not knowing a single person, let alone um, anyone in nursing. So that way I was really able to automatically have two great upperclassmen mentors and have peers that I could go to during the first semester when we were all kind of stressed about like this next exam or like this paper or whatever. Um, having the upperclassmen there to really help you and also um, another really great um, program that the nursing school has is called KILN, which is called Keys to Inclusive Leadership in Nursing. So um, as a member of KILN this semester, I've really been able to see how my identity as an Asian American student on campus really intersects with um, nursing. So they definitely have a lot of that support to help you transition to your freshman year. That's a lot of good stuff. Let me even go further back. Like, when, remember when you were in high school? Remember? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what were things that you did in high school that prepared you the best for what happens in the nursing program at Boston College? Would it be just science courses? Would it be time management? Would it be experiences that you may have had uh, as a babysitter, as a lifeguard, as an, a hospital volunteer? What are the things that you felt in high school you, you, you had under your belt that have made, that paid off? when you were a part of the nursing program at BC? That's a really good For me, in high so school, I, <laughs> I took um, a fair amount of harder classes, which I'm sure is the case for a lot of students that are already admitted. And with that, you have to kind of learn how to manage your time. So I mentioned earlier that the academic transition was pretty difficult for me. But I think in high school, since I had taken those harder classes and had to adapt and learn to manage my time, that did help me in college once you have to kind of space out all this free time that you have. Anybody else? I feel like oh. for me, oh, I didn't ahead. I didn't know like how to really, really efficiently study until I got to the nursing school. So I think like when my my practices in high school, like they were helpful, but I think you kind of like find your own flow once you get to college or get to BC or wherever you end up choosing. Um, and I really think kind of what going off what Kate said, like the community is so great that like you have other people to work with and um, kind of find your flow. So yeah, Chris's question was kind of it's difficult because you don't really know what college is like until you get there. Like you just get yeah. thrown into it and you don't know what to do because <laughs> like high school you have classes. You're just there from whatever eight to two or two thirty whatever. And college is just so different. Like you have to learn how to manage your time in a completely different way. But mm -hmm. kind of to go off of Anna's point. Um, I was a freshman nursing seminar leader uh, this past year, and we have tons of different seminars where we kind of help students um, walk them through these challenging transitions that a lot of students typically have, not just nursing, um, but it does specifically gear it towards nursing students. So, for example, one of our seminars, Juliana Gonzalez, um, who's the Dean of uh, Diversity and Inclusion for the nursing school, she um, runs a program where you learn your um, your strengths and kind of what your study skills are. And um, I, they usually do it right after your first anatomy exam, because that's a very stressful <laughs> time uh, for all of the nursing students. So they kind of let you test what you kind of think will work well for you based off of your high school skills and your time management. And then they see how your results come out on your first exam. Um, and then we have that meeting and people kind of reassess what type of learner they are. You, you take the, this whole big quiz, mm -hmm. um, whether you're a visual auditory um, learner, and um, they kind of help you construct a really uh, good study plan for yourself to kind of tackle the next exam and um, have even greater success. Um, so we talked some about the classwork that, that you mentioned, Anna. You do a lot of hands-on work as well, both on campus and then eventually when you have clinical experiences off campus. Um, can, can someone describe some of the experiences you have 
on campus back in Maloney Hall, um, whether they're you know in the classroom setting or hands-on in a simulation lab setting. What kind of things do you do? What kind of things happen in upper level classes in the house it, it, on campus at BC? Um, well, this past semester, just speaking from personal experience, I completed my psych clinical. And before we actually went into the hospital, we had the opportunity to use the labs to do a simulation in which BC hired actual students to portray patients with symptoms like those that we might be seeing in clinical. And I had no experience in the psych field prior to this. So just having that interaction with a student, the student actors kind of helped prep me. And in the sim labs, they actually have equipment where they can film you and it picks up the sound so that you can watch yourself back and kind of see what you need to work on. So that was super, super constructive just to see this is what I'm doing well, this is what I could work on to prep myself before actually stepping into that more difficult hospital setting. Yeah, and um, for, um, for me as a sophomore this year, um, sophomore year is the first um, year that you uh, nursing students start going into clinical. So um, first semester you have a clinical lab where you're um, just testing and like learning the skills. And I actually found going to Maloney, to the tutoring sessions that Kate was at were really, really helpful. Um, because um, things that may seem really simple, like washing your hands, like hygiene, or like taking your blood pressure, or like assessing heart rate, those are really basic things that we need to know before going to the hospital. But the nursing school does a really good job making sure that you have a good foundation. So I remember like my friends and I, we would just, even if it was like taking blood pressure for the first time, we'd go in like every tutoring session, every, when the labs open and just keep practicing it over and over. And they have, like all the materials and it pretty much looks like an actual like hospital room so there's hospital beds and there's um, plenty of equipment to stimulate um, a real clinical setting so that I found that really helpful for me when I um, first stepped into the hospital in January and I was like oh okay this is not um, this is actually pretty similar to what we have in lab. And now can one of you explain how those uh, clinical rotations those clinical experiences work uh, how does a senior or a junior uh, choose or are chosen or assigned to these different experiences? Um, how much control do you have? Um, how do you get back and forth? Who yeah. helps foster your ability to process some of the things that you see and do when you're in these experiences? So um, maybe some of the older students that are here can talk a little bit about how, how those clinical uh, operations work. Yeah, I could start. Um, so how it kind of works, so starting your second semester sophomore year is when you start your first of seven clinical rotations that you have to complete um, in order to graduate from BC. Uh, that one is your adult health one clinical rotation, so typically just a basic med surge floor. Um, I was at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, uh, Rosenberg 7. Kim Maloof was my uh, clinical instructor. She was the, the best. Uh, you're, I was in a group with six other sophomore nursing students. Um, and that's like your first, that's when all like the nerves come in because you get your assigned your first patient and you go in and you don't know what to say to them because you have only ever practiced like in the lab with your friends. So it's like not as weird. Um, and so that first clinical experience, is kind of really uh, different. And that's kind of where you really feel out whether or not you like it, I would say. That's like kind of when people like, it's like the telltale moment, like, oh, I, I either love this or I'm like, eh, I'm on the wall. Um, but I have friends that weren't the biggest fan of it and they kind of like um, slowly but surely got their grounds. And, and as you advance through the program, I would say people um, typically end up um, finding their, their niche and their groove. Um, so that's your first one. Then junior year is the weird year because you have um, a, a semester that you're assigned to that's called your flex semester. So uh, sophomore year, spring semester, you get um, an email and they tell you whether or not uh, your flex semester is spring or fall. I was assigned flex in the spring. So that's when students typically take that, take that opportunity to study abroad. Um, you either can or, or don't have to um, take nursing courses abroad. We can probably get into that later if anyone has another sure. question. Um, but so junior year in the fall, I took my maternity and adult health two clinical rotations. Um, and how that process kind of works is you're just randomly assigned to a group. You don't really have any leeway with those clinicals, um, except for one clinical uh, that I did last semester, um, your synthesis clinical rotation. Other schools call it their preceptorship. Um, it's actually required by law for you to, to complete um, this clinical rotation in order to sit for your um, board's 
to, for your NCLEX to become a registered nurse. So you're assigned one-on-one. -on -one. You actually, this is the one you get a little bit of flexibility with. You get to choose um, what type of field of nursing that you would like to complete these clinical hours in. It's 120 hours that you're supposed to complete throughout the semester. Um, it's the one clinical where you actually do full 12 hour shifts. So every Wednesday and Thursday night, I do uh, two 12 hour shifts back to back um, with my clinical instructor, Sarah Euler. Um, she was the best. I was on a oncology floor at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Um, that was my, um, the one that I got to choose. So I really, um, we don't really get that much oncology experience unless you're placed on an oncology floor in one of your prior clinical rotations. And so I felt like that was something that was really important for me to be able to care for those patients in that patient population. Um, and so I really wanted to have that experience. So how that process kind of works, uh, you won't have to worry about it till senior year, but you have to like write a little application essay. And I'm sure Emily um, is working on that now. And you okay, uh, submitted. Yeah, well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they, um, they review your application, they submit it to the hospitals um, in the greater Boston area. Um, and then you, you get selected by your preceptor. Not everyone gets um, their first choice, but you have a second and a third choice that you list as well. Um, I would say for the most part, pre people pretty much get their first, if not their second choice. Um, and so that, that's the clinical where you really feel like a full-blown nurse, which is pretty crazy. Like you're pretty much doing everything independently, passing meds, um, assessing patients on your own, doing everything, um, which is pretty cool. So that's, um, uh, that was, I did that one last semester along with my population health clinical where I went to Jamaica and then this current semester I'm doing my pediatric rotation um, and my psych rotation as well. So um, those are kind of like the seven and uh, the timeline changes based on like whether or not you choose to study abroad or not um, but for pretty much for the most part that's a typical trend in the schedule. Did he leave anything out? I don't like did a good job. I think he did too. I mean he covered a lot. There may be a couple of other questions that we can follow up with but that was pretty good Steve. Well done. Thank you. Now, now I'm, I'm trying to imagine, um, you know, you've chosen to become a, a, a nurse through this program, one that has a core curriculum, one that has a lot of other academic requirements of you. I mean, doing two 12 to 12, 12 hour shifts back to back, and then you return to campus and there's business students and communication majors and there's uh, student teachers. So, this isn't just, you know, 9,000 people in a nursing program. Uh, the nursing program constitutes a very small fraction of the students at BC. You have other academic requirements to do as well. Um, are those things that you enjoy? Are those things that are a nuisance? I mean, obviously, you found a real uh, vocation in the sense that this is something that you really believe is a, a good fit for your skills and really matters to the world. But now you have to take courses in social science and literature and philosophy and theology, things that necessarily, you know, at least on paper, might not necessarily make a, a nurse any better or different, or do they? Can you talk a little bit about those requirements and how they fit into your life as a, as a member of the Canal School? Yeah, um, I can talk about um, perspectives, which is a class I took freshman year to fulfill my philosophy and theology course. So it's a year-long course, and I think, honestly, um, when I went into it, I was not really expecting much out of it. I went to a public high school. I never really had any exposure to like philosophy or theology before coming to college. And I was more worried about like my anatomy exams during most of the class. But um, during this class, it was a mainly le lecture and um, discussion uh, based. But we actually, while studying different texts from Plato and like Socrates, um, we actually talked about the applications to like the modern day. We talked a lot about morals and about ethics, and we even sometimes debated different like hot topics and like um, controversial issues. So I think that really helped me engage a part of me that as a nursing student that I didn't know I had that, oh, like this, the way that we see the world is actually a lot different and it has the potential to be really different through this lens of philosophy and theology and how we um, care for people too. Um, it's more than just um, memorizing like all these Quizlet answers or memorizing um, exam answers. Um, actually, when you go into the patient and like the hospital setting, I be I'm beginning to realize that there's a lot of crossover between what we learn in like a philosophy and theology class about um, just about humanity and about um, the re relationships that we have with other people and how that applies directly into patient care. So I had a really great experience um, last year taking perspectives as a freshman. And um, I think also with the, um, there are a lot, yes, like there are the core requirements, 
but I think um, rather than seeing it as a burden, I think it actually for me has been really refreshing to kind of have one or two core classes each semester that are not nursing because our nursing um, workload tends to be pretty heavy, but having a class that's non-nursing, like I took um, a history of American pop music class last semester for my um, art core, and that was just a really fun way to kind of engage in a different way um, of thinking a way and just to take a fun class to fulfill my core without having it um, be something that like, oh, I have to just like check off another requirement. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want to comment on some of these other academic, either things that you're interested in doing or requirements that you have to fulfill of being a BC student that maybe have come around and, and helped you out and enriched your experience uh, at BC? Yeah, for me, um, I also took perspectives my freshman year and highly recommend it. The most I ever learned about, I, I also am from, came from a public high school, the most I ever learned about religion um, came from that. And I'm also not Catholic, so I kind of have that, um, not really any <laughs> idea of all of that. Um, but kind of going off the core, um, one of the social science cores I took was public health um, in a global society, up by my advisor, um, Nadia Balzam, who I love. Um, and now I'm actually pursuing a minor in public health. So I'm kind of completing the minor um, within my senior year. Um, and another thing too about the core is that if you have a certain amount of AP credits, I can also factor into getting some core requirements out. So I kind of had a couple of those come in. Um, I can't remember what APs I took in high school. Um, but it's really helpful because uh, the nursing school really does cover a lot of the core curriculum, whether it's like cultural diversity, sciences, math, we do statistics with the nursing school. Um, so kind of the other core curriculum, um, yes, it's like, it's a history core, but you kind of get to choose your class and um, so cool that you took a, a pop music class. Um, but you can kind of choose what you would like to do. It's not really like this rigid um, class that you have to take, but I think it's really helpful. Um, and like the people you meet in those classes, like we're with the nursing school a lot and that's about a hundred people, great group of people, Kate, our class is wonderful. I can like, speak to that. Um, but kind of meeting other people through the different schools is what um, the core has brought to me as well. So um, I, I really do appreciate the core and it's really helped me kind of connect like what my perspective is in nursing and then how I can kind of bring it in into other places too. Uh, Anna, you made a good point. I just want to follow up on it a little bit. You talked about how, uh, you know, taking perspectives made you think differently as a nursing student. Mm -hmm. When you guys came into Boston College, specifically to the Cannell School, did you have a, a very static or very simple way of looking at the field and the academic study of nursing? And has that really broadened out and changed now that you're in it and have taken so many classes and have met so many people and have had so many experiences? Like I think from the outside, there are a lot of people that think of nursing as just someone in scrubs walking in a, an acute ward of a hospital. But the reality is that nursing is a huge field, a, 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 a decorated academic field, and there are so many different uh, roles that uh, people with a bachelor's degree, advanced degrees in nursing fill in a, a medical setting and a public health setting. So, so have you really, I, I mean, I, I think I know the answer, but did you come into BC with maybe one idea of what nursing was, and now that's really been blown wide open? For me, I definitely had the idea that nursing was going to be very science-based, and it is, but a phrase that I'm particularly fond of that BC is also fond of is education of the whole person, and I think that the nursing school kind of twists that and makes it care of the whole person. So, of course, at first glance, you wouldn't think that a philosophy class or history class might impact you, but like everybody has been saying, because the core classes are smaller and you get so much discussion, for me, it really opened my mind to a lot of different backgrounds and people that have a lot of different experiences and taking that into the clinical setting mm -hmm. has really helped me see my patient as a whole person and their particular background and how that's influenced them. So in that sense, I think the core has definitely been directly helpful to my clinical experiences. Great. And kind of to go off of Chris's question about like what your view of nursing was prior to BC versus like how that's kind of evolved through the time that we spent at Boston College. And to me, the biggest like kind of going a little bit into my story as to why I chose nursing. Um, obviously, like the basic aspects of it, like job security, we're all gonna have jobs, especially in lieu of this massive worldwide pandemic. Um, really great. Um, like, uh, t yeah, so job security, you can work anywhere. Like there's just tons of different things that kind of were going on in my head. Like obviously logistically reasons why you ch choose to go into healthcare in general, um, but specifically nursing. But I would say that my biggest 
thing that's kind of changed for me, or at least what's solidified nursing for me through BC in my education, in my graduate education, has been um, seeing patients from like the, in their in their humanity and like not just seeing it as um, kind of like going just going into a patient's room um, and you don't really you don't know this person. Um, and so you kind of go through this, like initially you're like, oh, like I don't want to do that. Like you, you don't want to give a bed bath or you don't want to be the patient or anything of that regards. But you really do throughout your time um, at BC, and I would say like through the core and meeting individuals, um, you kind of see the reason why you chose nursing isn't be just because of all the, the logistical reasons why, but because of the, the humanistic aspect of it and like the greater reason why you chose your profession is to really help people like um, I imagine everyone that applied into nursing like the sole root of of like deep deep down when you think about it like why you chose to go into healthcare in the first place is you want to make a difference in people's lives every single day and so I don't I don't know if that necessarily was like in the back of my mind when I was choosing nursing um, but definitely throughout your time at BC that becomes more prevalent at in the forefront of the reason why uh, you choose to go into a profession that inherently is meant to impact the lives of people that you interact with on an every single day basis. Um, and yeah, I would say that like through BC's core, you kind of have the opportunities to reflect on those aspects of the reason why you chose to go into nursing in the first place. Well, it's a great answer. And I'm sure you all feel the same way. Um, all right, I'm going to respond to a couple questions that people sent in. Um, someone asked a question about um, equipment and supplies. Uh, at the beginning of a semester, what's different that a nursing student may need to purchase, acquire, have on their possession that other students in different disciplines don't have to? I think for at least freshman year, there's not really any um, ex like extra supplies that you need because freshman year, you're just taking um, your foundation courses. You're not actually um, in a clinical setting yet. so. But at least for sophomore year, there are um, some additional um, supplies that you'll need. Um, you'll definitely need like a stethoscope um, for for lab and for clinical. And there would be there's also scrubs as well and like a name badge. Um, and one thing is like obviously um, these um, supplies are not cheap. But one thing that BC also is really um, great at, we have a office called the Monster Office which specifically helps um, students of higher financial aid need. And I happen to um, qualify for um, and be a part of that um, Montserrat community. So um, through Montserrat, they're really supportive in making sure that every student, nursing student, has the supplies that they need before they enter in the hospital experience. So I never really had to like have stress about, um, oh, am I not going to be able to go to clinical because I can't afford X, Y, Z. So I think that's also another thing that BC does really well is um, just taking care of the community. Great, great. Um, another question people have is about um, getting back and forth from hospitals. Yeah, going to Brigham and Women's or Mass General or any of these locations you may be going to. Um, I mean, they're great experiences, but uh, how far are they in general? How have you gotten back and forth from these experiences? What should people expect if as a, as a sophomore, junior, then senior, uh, as far as transportation or the distance it is to get it back and forth? I would say it's probably personal preference and depends on the hospital. Some of the closer hospitals are very accessible by T and very economical to take the T. So it would probably be like a 15 minute, 10 minute ride to bring in the women's, for example. Some of the hospitals like Mass Gen are a little bit farther. So I had a clinical at Mass Gen last semester and my group compromised and took the T there and then Ubered back. And then on occasion, upperclassmen might have a car. So it just kind of depends on the group and the location of the hospital. But I would say that definitely in my experience, the groups have been very willing to work together to find something that everyone is a fan of. Mm -hmm. and usually for like places that are, are accessible by a car, they usually contact the nursing school to see it, like what students do have a car and could offer rides to the specific clinical site that isn't as accessible by T. Um, so the nursing school is really good about trying to plan out um, transportation as well. But it's, yeah, usually Uber, T or car. Now, now, Steve, um, a couple people have asked questions about uh, the next step. You talked about job security and you talked about practical matters of kind of where you're going at the end of college, but still, there's a wide field. There are hospitals and healthcare facilities all over the country and there's graduate programs and there's 
certifying board exams that you need to take. So can you talk a little bit about how that goes? And, and the juniors can talk about it too. When do people start talking about, um, you know, moving on professionally, preparing for after graduation, preparing to be an RN? Um, what, what form does that take, take when you're a junior and senior? And as a senior, Steve, I understand the circumstances are a little bit, uh, you know, different for people this year, but in general, or even if you can comment on it, like where, where is BC designed to leave you as a senior and what kind of things are you prepared to do or that BC has helped you along for the next step? Yeah, um, so kind of one thing I will say at the beginning is like the greatest part about nursing is that throughout your four years, you will feel like a very competent nurse in your field. Like I think BC does a fantastic job of professional development and making sure you have all the skills and competencies that you need to be a competent nurse uh, starting out in, in the workforce. I definitely feel like I'm, I am ready. Like I, I definitely feel like I've gotten all the experience from through all my experiences. I will be hopefully a good nurse. I don't know. Um, but uh, kind of as far as logistics go, it's really hard because junior junior year summer is like the summer that all of your friends, whether they're in CSOM or they're in ANS, get their like big internships. So all my friends last year, all my finance friends were like investment banking at Goldman Sachs and like Morgan Stanley and like everywhere like that. You hear about all these great internships and, and all the all, all your friends that are doing. Let and it out, Steve. Work. Let it out. Let it all be goodness. Go ahead. Let it out. And it's great for them because all of, <laughs> I would say for the most part, a lot of those internships have turned into full-time offers. Uh, Nursing is a little difficult in that sense because um, of the legality aspect that we need to be licensed in order to begin to start our professional careers. And so a lot of times hospitals will not hire you until after you sit for your NCLEX, which just is, your, uh, is, a, is a, a fancy term for your boards. Um, that all nurses are required to sit for and pass uh, to be able to get licensure um, in your state for um, to become a registered nurse. So, for example, I'm planning on coming back um, to New Jersey and commute to New York City next year. Um, I did kind of initially start the the process a little bit. Uh, as you work your way through college, you do build a resume, just adding all the things that you're involved with. Um, through the Career Center, they have uh, Laura. She's the, the head of... Um, the nursing healthcare uh, portion of, of the career center. And she has a, a lot of really great resources for nurses, um, whether it's resume review, cover letter um, review, just tips and pointers about kind of how certain hospitals will do things. It is a little bit harder once you get outside of the Boston area because they're a little bit more familiar because a lot of students do typically stay in the Boston area. Um, but they do have really great resources for um, specifically juniors and seniors to kind of um, initiate in that process. Um, I did begin that process with some New York hospitals and at the end of the day, they did say they will not make a hire until after I pass my boards, um, just because of it, it makes sense from a logistical standpoint. There's no sense in saving a spot for someone that doesn't technically legally qualify to work, um, in their hospitals. Uh, but there are some, um, residency programs that a lot of hospitals will offer, specifically in Boston. Um, I know Boston Medical Center, um, the VA in Boston, both have um, nurse residency programs for new grads. And most bigger hospitals will have new grad programs um, specifically geared towards students that just um, received their bachelor's in nursing. Um, and so those are really great programs where um, they offer uh, longer orientation programs for students to kind of get a feel for what they're confident in, um, where they have um, skill sessions and you have a mentor. So th these are some really great um, opportunities that these hospitals offer. I mean, through our career center, you can find out more about um, those programs, but it does unfortunately stink that we do need um, to have a little bit more um, of, from a legal standpoint in order to get hired um, at these hospitals. And the statistics are high for Boston, for Canal School graduates passing the boards. Yeah, I think the num. I don't uh, don't quote me on this. I think it's like a ninety five percent pass rate yeah. For, yeah. for the nursing students um, for like the first time. Um, yeah, the on first the time through, right? So, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, that sounds good. Um, uh, as we start to wind things down, um, you, you mentioned both of you mentioned study abroad at some point. Uh, Emily, you were a little bit curtailed during your time away. Uh, I know, Steve, you got to spend a full semester away. Um, not all nursing programs, bachelor of science programs allow students to do this. 
Um, can, can you guys talk a little bit about why it was so important to you to do and how much the school, specifically the Canal School, assisted you, helped you, supported you in doing it? Yeah, so kind of what Steve talked about before, the, the nursing school assigns you either, either a fall or a spring uh, flex semester. And that could be a semester where you don't take any nursing courses or that could be the semester that you go abroad. Um, so for me, the nursing school supported me in studying abroad in Switzerland. And I actually um, was just there doing a global health and uh, development policy program. So I was actually doing stuff that's a little more relatable to my minor. Um, but yeah, no, they're definitely supportive um, in while I'm there and like, they were contacting me and, you know, I'd had to do the synthesis application. And so they were, um, I was definitely in contact with the nursing school, even though I wasn't on campus. Uh, but to kind of go back, but yeah, one of the main reasons why I chose BC is that they allowed nursing students to go abroad. I really wanted to go abroad. Um, and when I was looking at other schools, a lot of them were like, oh, you can go on this like two week service program of the summer, or you can study abroad a, a month in the summer or kind of do all these things. But um, Boston College was the only school that I personally, I applied to a lot of schools too, um, that allowed me to study abroad. And I'm so, so happy that I, even though I only got two months, like it was such an amazing experience that um, I wouldn't, you know, regret it for the world. Yeah, to Emily's uh, point. Do you want to add to that, Steve? Yeah, yeah. So to Emily's point, I, <laughs> that was a big thing for me when I was deciding on schools. Um, I would say like BC is one of the very few schools in the country that allows their nursing students to study abroad. Um, and so I wanted it more for a um, immersion um, experience. Uh, mm -hmm. My parents don't like traveling. So I was like, I'm getting out of this country as quickly as <laughs> So I took that opportunity in the spring of my junior year to study abroad in Madrid, Spain, um, where I took absolutely no nursing courses, nothing for my major, nothing for, uh, I don't have a minor. Um, and so I, had the, I took that opportunity to satisfy some core requirements. And what's great about the nursing school is because they know how rigid our, like um, to kind of give you a little perspective, a lot of people don't really know this. And um, it bothers me when I talk to my roommates because for the most part, I would say most majors range from 30 to 40 credits to, to complete um, a major. A nursing major is roughly 65 credits, um, I think, in total to complete. So it's a lot, a lot more courses than are typically required of a normal major. And so um, you spend a majority of your courses at BC uh, tackling your, your nursing uh, major requirements. And so there's really not much flexibility. I will say that uh, Colleen Simonelli, the new undergraduate dean, has been doing a phenomenal job at making sure that um, there's kind of two and two courses where they're also not only satisfying nursing major requirements, but also uh, core requirements. Um, so like last semester, I took a course that just in the process got approved for a social science core. So now I believe that the entire social science core is now covered within the nursing major requirements, yep, which correct. is awesome. So it allows you to have a little bit more flexibility. So I took a social science and a fine arts course uh, while I was abroad. And the nursing school is great because, because they know how limited our options are. They typically will be able to get a course that most other students won't be able to get approved as a, a core requirement. Um, I think right now, based on how all the numbers have been panning out, I think most students can finish their core like it, within the nursing major and then a few extra classes. I don't really know how they've kind of progressed that, um, but I would check it, check that out um, when you get to BC. But um, yeah, no, so um, my opportunity, my study abroad opportunity was mostly fulfilling core um, and taking courses that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, Along the same line, but not talking about academics, talking about the time that you have to spend on other things. Is the nursing program, what you have to put into the nursing program, does it make clubs prohibitive? Does it make activities prohibitive? Um, or can you be like any other college student, be involved in extracurriculars or the arts or the newspaper? I mean, can you still do all the, all the things that any other major would do because you're gonna have enough time, energy, uh, flexibility in that other part of your life to pursue the other things that you want to do in college? I would definitely say that I've found the time to pursue clubs and I would encourage all the prospective students to do that as well because I think it's important to kind of foster those interests. Obviously nursing is very important and time consuming but if you play your cards right and use the resources that they have available and manage your time well I definitely think that you can partake in BC's club culture as well. Yeah, I think when I came in freshman year, my mom was so stressed about me, like, over, like, uh, over scheduling myself, because I was a nursing student, and I was so nervous to, like, sign up for all these different clubs, 
Um, so I kind of found a couple clubs that I really knew I wanted to dedicate the time to, SAP being one of them. Um, and even so far as I've gotten involved with clubs beginning junior year, like you, you, the involvement doesn't start when stop when you're a freshman, like you can keep getting involved as you kind of feel like you have the time. Um, so even junior year, I got involved with an organization called Strong Women, Strong Girls, and it's kind of a mentorship program where um, I go into um, whether a school or organization and do this um, female-based curriculum with girls in grades three through five, and we're kind of teaching them lessons outside the other okay. school, but um, fostering their interests um, and focusing on that age group because um, that's when their confidence starts to drop is around that age. So kind of I found like my own little like girl gang on campus, um, even as a junior, it just, um, I, there's always kind of time to kind of figure out involvement. Yeah, I was a little nervous coming into college because I didn't know how I was going to be able to manage my time. So there's a big um, student activity involvement fair that happens, I think it's in the first week when you, uh, when everyone comes back to campus. Um, and every single club and organization, roughly like, I think it's, 300 plus clubs and organizations all line up and they all have booths and everyone's literally like throwing flyers in your face trying to get you to sign up for their club. It's a pretty crazy sight to see. Um, and so I was really nervous because there were so many things that I was interested in, but I wasn't sure if I'd be able to balance everything. So I kind of took my first semester. I didn't really sign up for many things. Um, and I took it for me to kind of develop my good time management skills. Um, and then soft, uh, freshman year, spring semester is when I started to really get um, involved in clubs. And kind of to Emily's point, you, it's not like you have to, like you have to start signing up for things right away, immediately freshman year. Um, you can definitely get involved and people are very um, inviting and open um, to people getting involved in things at a later time. Um, I know I didn't join um, SAP, the student admission program until the end of my sophomore year. Um, so really great opportunities for, um, for all students. Uh, and we tried to persevere without you for those two years, but you made the right choice <laughs> eventually coming around, Steve. Thank you. Um, can I ask if any of you are, in, are going to pursue graduate study? Are any of you going to get more than just a bachelor's degree, at least in the plan that you have right now? My plan as of now is to become a nurse practitioner in the psych field, but I am as of now supposed to be completing an internship in the operating room this summer. So I think those are my two main interests, but I'm still trying to discern which one I would like to go into. I would say nursing as a field in general is really pushing um, for us, specifically bachelor's prepared nurses, to attain higher degrees. Um, they really want the profession of nursing to kind of be elevated to the next level. Um, where most of our um, most of our nurses are prepared with with doctorates, um, PhDs, and, and doctor nurse practitioner degrees. Um, so I my game plan right now is graduate in May. I don't know if I'm grad. I don't know how I <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and then start working. I plan to work for like roughly three to five years, um, and I would love to go back to school um, to get a, a doctorate in. Um, it's a, the CRNA, it's called the Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist. It just changed, it used to be a master's mm -hmm. degree program, but like I said, nursing's really trending towards um, putting most of their, their higher echelon nurses into doctorate programs. So now it's a, it's a PhD slash doctor nurse practitioner program. And real quick, Steve, someone asked about like the timing of the boards. When, mm -hmm. At what point on the timeline do you take it? Do you take it the summer? Yeah, so right, so after you graduate from BC, BC will give you, uh, once you get your diploma, they will send your um, credentialing over to uh, the, the testing centers and you get your authorization to test number through Boston College after you've completed all the requirements to graduate. Um, and then you can take it at any point. Um, my mom's a nurse and she said that one of her friends in her class took it like three years after she graduated from nursing school. Um, most people typically take it like within either, I would say June or July, right after you graduate. Um, and yeah, and then you can start working immediately right after that. Um, f finishing up here, I have a, someone asked a question about, uh, have, in your experience, in your class, there's about 90 to 100 people in every class. So there's 90, 100 seniors, juniors, 90 or 100 freshmen. Have you seen a lot of movement? Have you lost a lot of your classmates? Have you gained people that have moved in? Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's not a big movement. 
but are there, is there anybody that's in your class as juniors that didn't start at BC in nursing? Steve, you, uh, Anna, you, or have you seen it the other way? Have you seen some great attrition of people that started nursing and they found out that it wasn't their thing? Yeah, I'd say like, BC, I'd say BC is a really good attrition percentage. I've, we started, our class is pretty big. We have like 120. Um, and it like tear totters like I don't think it's gone below like people have not that not that many people like I remember when my mom was going through nursing school she said like 30 people dropped out and that is not the case at BC I would say pretty much everyone's pretty motivated and everyone um, for the most part has like their idea of what they want from their education and so um, I'd say we lost like maybe 10 to 15 but we gained that right back um, the transfer process has kind of changed since I've been at BC. I remember bef the year before me, they said that like they pretty much accepted every transfer internally. Um, but um, my year was the first year that they saw a massive interest in nursing students, uh, in students in ANS trying to transfer into the nursing school. So now I know that there's a whole, it depends on obviously the numbers and who's actually applying to mm -hmm. transfer in the nursing school. Um, but I do know that there was like a wait list of students um, that they had to interview, write essays um, to transfer into the nursing school. So it is pretty competitive uh, on that front. Like I said, it, I guess it varies year to year based on how many students are interested in transferring. Um, but I will say for the most part, we do have a pretty good um, percentage of our students that stay and stick with nursing through, throughout um, the whole four years. But we do have some pretty uh, new, uh, newcomers and they adjust the curriculum um, so that I would say most students that do end up transferring in, they'll end up graduating and walking with their class but uh, they usually complete one clinical um, that following summer after they graduate um, in order to get the awards. Good to know. Well, you guys absolutely crushed it. Uh, we talked about everything from beginning to end in nursing. We talked about a little bit of life at BC, uh, hearing about your hopes and dreams. I mean, we covered everything. It was just really, really good. We